Regular viewers of this channel will know that I've put my street scrambler through some tough situations. I've dropped it, broken it, and taken it places where it probably shouldn't be taken. The scrambler is my pride and joy, and the main purpose of the build was to make it look good, even if it meant making it less practical. Since taking it out on camping adventures twice a month for the past six months, I've been noticing rapid signs of wear, scratches, dings, electrical failure, and decided that enough is enough. So I went out and bought myself a Tenere 700. The T7 is a bike that I've been eyeing off for the past couple of years, mainly due to its looks. But seeing what the pros have put these things through, what they're capable of, and the enormous amounts of positive reviews help solidify my decision on pulling the trigger. All I need to do now is stick it in the garage and start building it. Before we get started though, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. This is a Ridge Wallet. It's small, simple, and tough. I love that it's the exact same size as your cards and fits so well into the palm of your hand. I find myself always holding it, touching it, and caressing it. You can store up to 12 cards in here and your cash here. To access your cards, all you need to do is push from the little cutout and then remove the card as needed. Your cash is securely held in place by either the money clip or the cash strap and takes up very little room in your pocket, which is a massive plus for when you're heading out on the road. Did I mention it was tough? The Ridge Wallet is so tough that they each come with a lifetime warranty with over 30 different colors and styles to choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, so you'll be sure you'll find something that suits your ride. The Ridge Wallet don't only do wallets though. They also keep your keys from jingling with the super sleek key case. I love that my keys are now kept organized and quiet all while looking the business. Get the best offer with ridge.com slash motorfuels to save up to 40% right now through till December 22nd. It's a perfect Christmas gift. That's up to 40% off using the link in the description below. So the main purpose of this build is to keep it functional because it's gonna be doing a lot of off-roading, a lot of touring as well. I obviously want it to look as badass as possible. So this episode is gonna be broken up into sections. Obviously I don't have all the parts yet. I've only got the stuff here from SRC and then I've got some some levers and stuff like that. So parts are gonna be coming over time uh, over the next week and a half or something like that. Today's mission is to get all of this awesome SRC Adventure Moto gear fitted. SRC sent me out this stuff. They're not paying me, but they sent this all out to me. Thank you so much, SRC. It looks ridiculous. Look at this bash plate. That is solid, way better <laughs> than that one. And so we've got the, the rear luggage rack. Um, he's actually got some more parts coming for me. There's the little, the side racks that come off it. This is their headlight protector as well. Looks pretty aggressive, full on Decepticon styles. Rear master cylinder guard, a nice big fat stand plate thing to make your stand fatter. Goodbye cans of beer underneath the stand. This ridiculous bash plate, it looks awesome. And then the upper crash bars. That's today's mission. Let's get into it. So first we're going to mount the rear cargo rack, which is super simple. Remove your luggage mounts, screw in the one supplied by SRC, then fit your luggage rack. You now have a super sturdy luggage rack with multiple mounting options. Next, we're throwing on the rear mast cylinder guard. Remove the two screws, fit the guard, screw in the screws provided. Our rear master cylinder is now protected. It's time to mount the upper crash bars. First, I like to lay out all my parts on what I'm working with. Next, we need to remove some bolts. These two up here, this big boy here, and the same on the other side. Then mount and fit the upper bracket and insert the little sleeves into the bar up the top and down the bottom. The crash bars are fitted using eight millimeter thick stainless steel mounting brackets on each side of the bike frame for extra strength. A cool thing about these mounting brackets is if you want to remove the crash bars for whatever reason, you can just leave the mounting brackets there for a quick install later on. Here's a little bit of the supplied thread locker on the bolts that fix the mounting brackets to the frame. Then orient the crash bars and fix them with the bolts provided. Do the same to the other side and we're in business, baby. I prefer this kind of apple crash bar that loops around the front. I will be fitting some lights to it, hopefully in phase two of the build. Plus it gives me more action camera mounting positions, which we all know I love. Next, we're fitting the headlight guard. This one again is pretty straightforward. Once you remove these four screws, take the guard bracket with the screws provided and mount it up. Then fit the headlight guard into the rubber mounting holes. The headlight guard is laser cut from two millimeter thick high grade stainless steel. The benefit of this is that it's easy to remove for cleaning the headlight with no tools required. The bash plate is a four millimeter thick laser cut hard aluminium plate which provides great protection. 
It also comes with a suspension link protection plate and underside slider strips, which we're fitting up here. Once they're all mounted and the decals have been applied, simply remove the previous bash plate. Look at that size difference. And mount up your new plate using the original holes with the bolts supplied. This plate offers far more protection than the standard one and I reckon it looks super aggressive. I love it. Definitely suits the vibe that I'm going for. Okay, now it's time to switch out the levers. These were only 30 bucks off eBay, but they're not bad. Super easy install and they look and feel way better than the stock ones, in my opinion. There's all... What's going on, bro? <laughs> what's, going, what's going on here? So this is the next day, obviously. Corey's here and he's, um, I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's fitting a horn. This is what it's taken to fit a damn horn. Uh, but it's, it sounds like a freight train, so that's pretty, that's pretty exciting for him. Anywho, yeah, how's the boxes here? That he racking them up. Got another package. Zong, this right here is the tail tidy for it. This one is by B&B Off-Road. And also, Quadlock have sent some goods. Another wireless head charger, handlebar mount, and the vibration dampener. And I've got the screen adjuster. I bought this. So this, these little things here, just mount into these holes here. Um, it just allows you to slide up the screen enough so that the air just shoots right over your head. I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's fit all this up. I'm really keen to see how this goes because look at this, this plastic, this crap. Ugh. First, we need to move a whole bunch of things. The pillion seat, the normal seat, these five screws, these screws under here. Basically anything that's holding this big old plastic boy because we need to get under all of that. On the left hand side, disconnect your tail light and indicator plugs. Remove the two nuts from the rear of the tail light and pull the light through. Remove your license plate and all the screws holding that plastic colossal together. It's looking better already. Next remove the indicators from the plastic mold and install them on your B&B tail tidy blinker case making sure you get left and right correct. You can now install the B&B tail tidy top plate on the bike using the original bolts. Refit your tail light, then fit the LED number plate light provided. I ended up cutting the plug off the original number plate light then soldered the harness to the new LED light. A tip for soldering two wires that are next to each other is to stagger them to prevent any shorting out. Next, fit the blinker case, then your number plate, check all your lights are working and you're good to go. Okay, the exhaust arrived, which is wicked. Before I show you what this is, let me, let me tell you my thought process here. So, the biggest fault with the Tenere 700s is the exhaust, as far as I know. That's like just doing research on YouTube and everything. Reason being is that this thing, especially the stock one, the stock can is enormous. If you drop it, or not if, but when, <laughs> when you drop it, this guy here just bends in and it's just welded to the, to the frame or the subframe to the frame, it's actually welded to the frame. So once you snap that off, you're bloody screwed. And the biggest thing with these big um, cans is that when you drop it for the first time or the third time, or whatever time, it ends up hitting the swing arm. If you're not aware of that, you keep riding on trails or on anything really, you end up digging a massive hole in your swing arm, which is an expensive situation <laughs> you're gonna find yourself in. I haven't really found an exhaust that I like that tucks up under here nicely. I know HP Course does one, Camel does one as well. He's got like a wicked sort of design that goes up there. It does look better down here. So I'm not, I'm not sorted yet on the exhaust situation, but what I did was buy myself a quick fix just to make this thing sound louder than what it does now. I know when I open this box, you're gonna be like, Rob, what the heck? Now, the, as, as I was going through Instagram, looking for inspiration and everything, I came across this guy's profile. His name's Josh. I'll link his Instagram and YouTube and everything. He actually has a YouTube channel, did some stalking. And his exhaust stood out to me. I was just like, what the heck is that? It looks wicked. I need that on my bike. I ended up just buying it. It was like 240 bucks, man, just this can. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my situation. And if something happens to it now, like with, uh, with, this, with this can on there, if I do drop it and it ends up pushing it all in, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of it and just get a, a high mount or something. But I just wanna see how this goes before I do anything, before I pull the pin on like a $1,200 you know, exhaust. 200 bucks, man, let's check this thing out. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? Here we go. There it is. <laughs> How funny is this, man? They throw an Acropovic sticker in. That's hilarious. They should throw all the brands in there. So yeah, so much smaller. You're still gonna save a little bit of weight, whether it increases horsepower, who the hell knows. I reckon it'll breathe easier though. And obviously I'm so pumped 
on new exhausts. I mean, new exhaust day is always exciting to see how it's going to sound. And so it's a, it's a pretty flat looking exhaust or can. So what Josh did as well, and what he recommended, and what made it look actually cool, was getting these guys on. And so these sort of protect it, I guess, like when you drop it and stuff like that, they're just rubber and you just wrap them around. They're just universal. And you wrap them around and get through to the, the creamy bits. Yeah, anti-scolding cover. All from Amazon, man. It was like 30 bucks each. So two of those goes on and it looks pretty, pretty wild. It comes with all your clamps, all your springs and everything like that. So it's all sort of legit, sort of. And over here, I've just sprayed up the heat shield there. Just gave it a bit. Even the screws, I just gave them a flick of um, the high intensity heat stuff. So it doesn't all go all weird. See how it goes, eh? See how it sounds as well. Uh, I will do a before and after at the end of the episode, so make sure you stick around for that. I'm gonna get hooked into this. So I'm super stoked with how it's turned out so far. The exhaust actually looks pretty cool. I don't, I don't mind it. <laughs> I don't mind it. For 240 bucks or whatever, including the other things, it's like 300 bucks, everything delivered. Looks the part. I really like the rubbery bits. I reckon they sort of match the, these top plates here. It gives it like a Batman-ish <laughs> sort of feel. I'm into it. I'm into it for now. And moving at the front here, obviously I don't have the wireless charger on yet. I will be hardwiring that in to the whole electrical system, to accessories. And I'll also be installing a USB socket right here. USB-A, USB-C, and it's a voltmeter as well. But to do all that, I need to literally rip out the whole front end. All this needs to come off. It's actually a mofo of a job. And that's gonna be here, and up here I'm gonna have, I don't know, like another like GPS. I don't know, something, something. See what happens. I got some nice heavy duty bars from Renthal coming as well. It's gonna be all nice and blacked out. Mirrors I'm gonna keep. I don't mind the mirrors. I reckon they look fine. They suit the style of the bike. I will get those ram mount thingies so you can just fold the, movies, uh, the mirrors in once you're off-roading and everything. Levers work awesome. I love the look of them. I love the feel of them. They've even got Tenere on the inside there, but I love the, the sheen on it. They work really well, feel really nice. Indicators, I've got indicators coming from Kellerman. They're on their way. Keeping the Kellerman styles, you know. Oh, and my, my, my new plate. What do you think? So I wanted to go a bit more, you know, Rob Hamilton-ish because this is gonna be for the, mainly for the Rob Hamilton channel. And Jesse from MCM Apparel actually came up with the idea, go ham, and I reckon that's just, I reckon that's wicked. <laughs> I love it, so I just did it. I still don't have one for the scram though. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. But yeah, so these ta the indicators are going to be gone. I'm going to have the stop tail indicators in here again. Not the addos, I'm going for a different style. But stop tail indicators, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm working something out for this back part. Which is going to take a little while, but we'll see what happens. Got new tyres on the way. This is all the phase two build, by the way, which I'll be obviously filming. I'm going to get some nice bark busters, get rid of these plastic. And it's not even tight. <laughs> get rid of these plastic ones. You may also notice that I did get rid of the, the stickers that were here and the ones that were the back. They were just, they were killing my eyes here. Massive eyesore, so I got rid of them, just peeled them off. See you later. I think it looks a lot tidier. And for a wrap, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna go all out and get a wrap sorted straight away, but I think I'm just gonna hold off 
and I'm gonna just rock the black for a little while. I don't mind the black. It's, it's just reminding me of like a Batman bike or something, the bat bike. Um, especially even with like Go Ham, it's just missing the T from Gotham. Oh, and I got these, um, I got the screen adjusters. I put the screen adjusters in as well. They're like, it was like 20 minutes. Super easy, you take those screws out, put these ones in. And then you can full on. Whoop. There we go. And that actually works really well. Links to all the parts and everything that I've done are in the description below. So I took this out for its debut camping trip just this week, and the video just went live last night. So I'll link it right here, go and check it out. Um, see this thing in action. It was wicked, it was so good. I can't believe how well this thing's set up. I know everything's stock, the suspension's stock and everything's still, but just in terms of touring, wind is off the chest, the rack system, just, it's so big, it's so large, and I can put all my different packs all around the place, I've got all the Lone Rider packs. Um, my water can go here now, so the weight's a little bit more, you know, evenly distributed. Even in terms of safety for first aid, I know one of the guys mentioned in my camping video that I've got the first aid kit buried under too many bags and it's so hard to get to. Well now, it's on the other side, just in a pack, under the clips, first aid, straight away. So just in terms of just, just that in general is so much better than the Scrambler. Obviously, it's not an adventure bike, it's a street Scrambler. The suspension and braking on this, with all my gear on, I felt like I had to keep checking the back to make sure that I had my gear still on the back because I felt like it was, I felt like it was gone. <laughs> Handling and everything is ridiculously good. I was powering it up a mountain on the way to the campsite and I had so much fun. Even with all the gear on, I had so much fun. Where with the, the Scrambler, I need to take it super easy, super cautious, just because the brakes are so bad on this thing, the Nissan single, single rotor. Compared to the Tenere's dual Brembo at the front and you know, it's so much safer and it's just super comfortable as well. There's less fatigue. It's, <laughs> I'm happy. I'm a happy, happy man. But I'm just so happy that I don't have to beat this one up so much. Time to start ordering for phase two of the build. Woo! Can't wait. Thank you so much guys for watching. Thank you to SRC. Thank you to B&B Off-Road Engineering. Thank you to Quadlock. And thank you to Josh. And also thank you to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for that Christmas gift, save up to 40% off and get someone special in your life. A wicked wallet. They're actually awesome. I use mine every day. Literally every day. All right guys, see you in the next vid. Boys!